Good morning and welcome uh, everyone. Uh, we will begin with the word of prayer. I just want to encourage anyone to volunteer, please. Father Almighty God, we give you thank, we give you praise. We adore you and I lift your name so high. We thank you for, for the gift of life today. We thank you for the class today. We commit the class into your, your hand. We commit the pastor into your hand. We pray, Lord, for effective uh, network. Let your network be stable. Father, for you say, where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there with us. So we recognize your presence at this time. Holy Spirit of God, come and take us through. Give us wisdom. Give us knowledge. Give us understanding. And let these words that we are going to learn bear fruits in our life and in the life of the people that we are going to minister to. We pray and declare this in Jesus Christ's name, Son of the Living God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Paul. Um, we have seen the distinction between the Old Testament prophetic ministry and the New Testament prophetic ministry. We saw that God has given his Holy Spirit to live inside every believer now, and therefore, you know, we um, we can walk with the leading of the Holy Spirit, but then uh, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, even the gift of prophecy is operational in the life of, uh, it, it can be operational in the life of every believer and every believer can prophesy. So we talked a little bit about the progression where um, uh, prophesying believers you know, are are the common or the basic uh, basic. Um, level that we look at and later would be the grace gift of prophecy uh, that is the prophetic ministry in which people flow and of course the uh, highest uh, level which would be the prophetic office uh, which are the gifts that christ has given to the church for the equipping of the body and um, we we talked about uh, the book of acts and how over there we see people functioning in various capacities and all these capacities we uh, observe them functioning um so now we will talk a little bit about the gifts of the spirit and the prophetic so uh, i have already shared this that when we use the term the prophetic it's more of an umbrella term okay so uh, when i say umbrella term it means that it has within itself a few other components so uh, when we look at the gifts of the spirit what happens is you know there are nine gifts that we can enlist and in those nine gifts we would generally say that prophecy word of knowledge word of wisdom uh, and even discerning of spirits typically comes under the umbrella of what we call as the prophetic so when i say prophecy generally i'm referring to the gift of prophecy but when i say the prophetic then even other gifts such as what i've already shared you know uh, the gift of word of wisdom word of knowledge and discerning of spirits uh, is is also a part of it so uh, when we practically move in the gifts of the spirit we mustn't get too hung up on the technicalities of which gift is operating because our intention is to bless the person that we are ministering to so when we are serving them when we are praying for them maybe uh, you know we begin with a word of prophecy like we're just saying um uh, god is is um god is showing me that he will be taking you to such and such a place and um that you know these things are going to happen in your life but as we are flowing as the work uh, of the spirit is flowing out of us you know suddenly we might switch to saying something like uh, you have been through uh, many challenges in your life or in the past this has happened so what is that that is actually word of knowledge because Otherwise, we, we can't, we wouldn't know what exactly happened in that person's life. So that is the word of knowledge. Okay. Word of knowledge is a little bit of information. So uh, the way the term is, word is, uh, it's not a full sentence or it's not a full paragraph. So it's a little bit, a word of knowledge. Knowledge is um, information. 
so some information that has been given to us we call that as the word of knowledge and this information is obviously supernatural it's not something that we learned because we know the person or you know we we uh, could uh, get that uh, from somebody who who knows them so absolutely no connection with the individual but supernaturally we received a word of information or word of knowledge so word of wisdom is solution when uh, god gives um, some solution to what's going on in people's lives i think we've talked about this uh, earlier so we are praying for them and in continuation to what i was praying for that person maybe suddenly uh, i i say something like uh, um you will have two options of um, you know two options of some assignments um, but god is god is showing that you know this particular assignment will lead to blessing in your life so what is that it's it's like a word of wisdom wisdom is like telling people how to resolve a matter or um, you know how to apply some truth so that is word of wisdom so you notice when we are flowing in the prophetic that's the umbrella term we could be switching switching between all these gifts but ultimately it doesn't matter okay the important thing is to minister to the person so um while we are ministering just go ahead go with the flow uh, don't worry too much and uh, let the streams of living water flow we generally say that gifts flow in a package okay now this is not just true for these prophetic gifts but even some other gifts could be operational like as you're prophesying or as i'm prophesying maybe the person uh, receives healing supernatural healing so gifts of healing a uh, gift of healings is operational in their life so any gift can operate and uh, gifts generally operate in a package okay so that we must remember now moving on to the next subject here uh, which is about the prophetic presbytery so presbytery is a company um, of elders and uh, in the new testament we see you know a, a presbytery or eldership eldership in the local church so eventually there were apostles in the in the church but then we know that a need arose uh, in acts chapter 6 uh, of distributing food so then they assign volunteers in the church so there were all these Im improvements or you know developments that were taking place in the structure of the church the leadership of the church so eventually we see that around the time when paul was ministering and you know many other uh, of his uh, mentees were overseeing churches there were uh, elders elders presbyter in the church so that is what is uh, presbytery now one thing that we notice paul say is uh, he tells uh, timothy in first timothy chapter 4 and verse 14 do not neglect the gift that is in you which has which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership okay so this is aligned to what happened in acts chapter 13 over there the holy spirit told the elders uh, set aside for us paul and barnabas and so they were commissioned they were commissioned for this new ministry which started off so this is this is very similar where the eldership is uh, commissioning or the eldership is is um, you know prayerfully leading imparting into the lives of those who are under them so what does paul tell timothy he says look when uh, the eldership or the presbytery group of leaders laid hands on you they prayed what happened there is a gift that is imparted to you okay 
through prophecy and the laying on of hands so what do we understand here the the concept is that gifts can be uh, i use the term imparted so let's say you know the leader is flowing in the prophetic and as he lays hands uh, on the mentee the gift that the leader has can be put upon or put into the mentee so these things are biblical it's already there in the bible and so even today we practice uh, the this laying on of hands by a group of elders uh, and we can trust that the gifts will be uh, imparted now talking about impartation you know we we've, we've said it time and again impartation does not mean that everything which is in a person will be transferred in the same way uh, and the other person will function and flow in the exact same way impartation will happen but what does it depend on it depends on the faith of the person who's praying the elder it depends on the faith of the person who's receiving the desire of the person who's receiving it depends on the grace uh, which is you know in the life of the person who's being prayed for so um, only those gifts will get imparted and they will function uh, in the in the very unique way that god has called that particular person so these are some um, things we understand about eldership laying on of hands and impartation of gifts so when can some a practice like this be used in the church a practice like this can be used to confirm that you know god has called someone to a certain ministry uh, these practices can be used to ordain people ordain or uh, commission is the other word okay uh, you we would generally use the term commission in most of our christian circles where i have been commissioned to be an evangelist commissioned to be a pastor so ordain so uh, presbytery can lay hands and release gifts and the uh, the people who are going into the ministry or other things are receiving the gifts um, or even simply impartation where one prays for the other to uh, get the gifts so in during impartation we can do activation activation is what activation is any believer you know any any uh, believer any man or woman of god there are certain graces and gifts in their lives so as an elder prays for them by laying on of hands what happens we are calling forth we can say something like we call forth the gifts the graces uh, which are in this person and those gifts get activated so uh, these are some things that we observe in the old in the new testament so if there are any questions we could take that up uh, before we go forward with chapter 4 in our uh, publication here understanding the prophetic Yes, yes, Sivya. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Pastor. I was just uh, thinking about this impartation aspect. Uh, so I'm always very uh, like not skeptical, but um, yes, as you said, like it is uh, mentioned in the word, but we see in some circles it's too much. Uh, projected in such a way that uh, you know as if that person is kind of a godly figure like a god kind of figure um, you know for um, after which people are you know draw, drawing into so that they can get the impartation i don't know if uh, if uh, i make sense when i say this but uh, sometimes i feel why is that because uh, god is no respecter of people and Mm, if we really desire god will uh, surely give us uh, you know so why there is a person in between that's my question yeah it is biblical but it's a very difficult thing for me to grasp because uh, god does not want uh, a mediator right he we can directly go to him so why the need of uh, you know this impartation 
Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you, Divya. So, Divya, our understanding is that every gift comes from God. When we talked about Elijah and Elisha also, we clarified that. We saw how um, when Elisha desired, excuse me, when Elisha desired a gift, sorry about that, um, Elijah did not immediately lay hands on him and say, okay, you know, you take it. Yeah, but um, even he wanted Elisha to wait upon the Lord uh, and follow some instructions. And when Elisha finally did it, when Elisha finally did it, um, we know that the anointing came upon Elisha. So the bottom line that I'm trying to emphasize, Sivya, is gifts come from god even when impartation happens it's coming from god okay it's not coming from that person which is which is why faith is essential okay faith expectation desire all those key things which we need in our intimacy with the lord that is required even during an impartation so it's something like um, I want a certain gift to be operational in my life. I am trusting God for it. Okay. And I want that gift to whatever, activated, get activated, stirred up. Now, God will release it. God will definitely release it. But there are environments or uh, uh, you know, through people, association, where he may he may want to use these circumstances or people to actually release or activate it. Okay, so ultimately, it's coming from God only. But in the process, God does use people. So we need to look at it that way. Okay, not so much as, um, you know, the person is a mediator. D does this make sense, uh, Divya? Or, uh... Yes, yes, I, 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 it does make sense, Pastor. I'm, I'm not against it or anything. Uh -huh. I'm, just, uh, uh, I'm just against the hype sometimes that is given to a person because uh, it, it makes that person a kind of God kind of, you know, people, people are... Uh, misled uh, sometimes if, if at all the testimony or the witness of that person goes hey, hey, uh, in a different direction you know so uh, people can get misled their faith can get shattered so uh, yeah it's just that uh, this uh, provision in the in the scripture sometimes can be you know perverted can be you know taken into a wrong level so yeah that's what i was trying to understand uh, it's uh, not uh, yeah that i'm against it but yeah yes yes so uh divya i understand your concern um we would term it as an excess okay so there are excesses in the christian circle when it comes to many things not just the operation of the gifts of the spirit. We've seen in church history, uh, even, you know, the word, speak the word, claim the promises. Uh, it, it's, there are excesses. People have used it and unfortunately abused it. And uh, that creates a panic, that creates, uh, um, you know, uh, like, like a discomfort for the believers to, to continue to flow in it. So, you know, we keep saying this, Whatever good uh, has come out of you know certain movements or the kind of uh, the ministry that uh, people have done, uh, let's appreciate it. Let's desire for more of it. But you know there there are excesses in in many instances. But we need that discerning spirit to say that we know this is of God, uh, but what is of the flesh we will discard. Okay, um, and uh, if we keep an eye like that. Uh, I'm sure uh, 
uh, we can work on the right track. Yeah, sure, Pastor. That that clear, clears it a lot. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Divya. Uh, and I saw Jeffina's hand go up. Did you have anything to say? Or if not, I'll go to Brother Paul. Uh, I have something to yeah. ask about. Um, so impartation, uh, I mean, I'm, even I'm not against it. But is it something that people should seek for? I mean, ultimately, uh, we are connected with God, we can ask him. But there are people who just go like, hey, this pastor, from him, we can get this impartation. And just for the sake of that, people will just stand in line. And I've seen, uh, I think in my childhood, there was one pastor, and uh, he was uh, helping people to speak in tongues. Uh, so that was a big line of people standing uh, so that the tongues can, they can receive it or something. But is it something that we need to seek for? Or uh, I wonder whether the pastor should have said, like, uh, you have your personal time with God, uh, ask God for the gifts uh, uh, so that you can start speaking. Or is it, is it something that we can seek for, like, uh, when a problem arises, people are suddenly like, okay, let's go to that pastor, to go here for the impartation of the steps. Is it something that we can seek for? Is it a right way? It's, it's that my question. Yeah, so Jeffina, what I would say is, um, yes, the same thing that I told Divya, gifts come from God. So we must seek God for the uh, gift. Like, let, for example, uh, prophecy. Okay. I want to be a prophetic person. I want to prophesy. So I seek after God all the time saying, God, let that gift operate. Let that gift operate. Now it is God who creates opportunities. Like there's a weekend school or there's uh, this uh, understanding the prophetic book lying in front of me. And we've already said that you know, God uses human channels. God uses uh, many, many of these things to help nurture the gift okay so we would not negate all that so desire the gift if i if if there is uh, you know no way of meeting a person and then the i continue to practice the gift i develop the gift and you know it gets better uh, in that manner wonderful you know you would really never uh, had anyone you do not go after anyone also the gift is developing on its own but if there is some such situation, let's say, you know, there is a, a particular pastor or there is a particular individual, I'm not saying run after people, but I'm saying if, if you are in a situation where uh, it, is, it is in your heart, okay, that you're looking at a per person ministering in the prophetic and uh, within you, you go, wow, I love the way this person is flowing uh, in the prophetic, okay? Uh, I'm not saying run after the pastors and say, oh, I want what they have. But it's a wonderful thing to desire, you know, desire to grow in the Lord, desire to grow in the gifts. So in that sense, what I'm saying is there's nothing wrong. Unfortunately, because what people have done is they've tried to, they've tried to elevate a person above God. Which is why we, we are all discussing it here and saying, uh, you know, is it okay? Is it okay for somebody to uh, pray and impart the gift to us? Uh, actually, it's okay. But because people have been elevated so much and, uh, you know, Christian people don't have the foundation where uh, they understand the gifts and they know it has to anyway directly come from God. But sometimes... If God has created an opportunity for us to be prayed for by someone, there's no harm in that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, be discerning. So what I'm saying is there's nothing wrong even to desire an impartation from someone or somebody's ministry. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong. But just we need to be clear of our motives. Am I depending on the person and their ministry or am I really depending on God? So if there is some option where you, you are able to visit a certain ministry okay, or uh, have be prayed for by someone, okay, don't run after it. Okay, so 
that's how i look at it but we should not negate don't don't neglect the fact that this is a possibility yeah okay uh, all right uh, uh, yes sir, brother paul please go ahead uh, yes i just wanted to add something small i think it is in the book of amos chapter 3 verse uh, 6 there I, i'm not very sure where the bible says god will do nothing except he reveals himself to his servants those are the prophets so actually there is no way we may run away from uh, the, the the people of god but as you said some people begin to abuse the gift that god has given to them but god uses he reveals his things in most cases to his servants the prophets the people he has appointed and then also if you look at the gifts the gifts are really very different the bible even say not others are given the gifts of prophecy others of tongues so they are really really very very different they cannot give all of them to you some you have to get from has to be imparted from you from the others so that is how i i look at it thank you okay uh brother could you could you please come again uh, and uh, that scripture that you mentioned is amos 37 i just uh, checked it um so uh, what would be the point that you're making yeah the point i'm making is that as god has said that he will do nothing but he re- his secrets to the prophets so in 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 such a situation we may not avoid the servants of god we may not avoid them because god has only revealed it to them so god may reveal something to his servants so how do we get that thing unless that servant impart it on us we may not so that is the point i'm trying to to put across thank you thank you for sharing again um checking for a particular okay so uh, um, that scripture that you said god does nothing uh, save he you know um, reveal that to his prophets uh but also you see there are many scriptures like psalm 25 verse 14 where we read that you know god confides or god uh, in other words reveals his secret or the secret things to the those who fear him so uh, i mean i i understand where you're coming from and what you're saying yes there are prophets of god uh, and uh, god does reveal many things to them so we we would receive it from them but then to think that you know god only confides in in the prophets and uh, you know without a prophet in my life i will not be able to to hear from god that may not be correct if if for example you know let's take this scenario that uh, i am an individual and i am living in a city where there are not many ch- and there are not many uh, prophets of god and i i have now been born again and i'm growing in god many things are happening in my life and for the longest period of life span um you know i'm not really interacting with any prophets or no nothing major like that but then i do uh, you know uh, watch some online resources and learn from it so just because i don't have a prophet in my life it doesn't mean that i will not know the heart of god okay so if a prophet comes by and i have a chance to you know meet the prophet well and good but the converse of that will be uh me assuming that i every individual needs a prophet because god does nothing say we reveal it to his prophets okay so th- if i believe in the converse of that that yes i need a prophet everybody needs a prophet what will happen as a result is every believer will run after prophets we need enough prophets the believers but then the bible doesn't really you know make that a necessity so i i understand uh, what you're sharing but i i differ in that one thought where um, you know 
the secrets are only revealed to the prophets and that we need to get it from them if there is no prophet around it's okay god can still reveal it to me directly so uh, is that fine uh, brother paul or uh, do you do you <laughs> you know are you thinking yes. differently no i i totally agree with you but even as as the way i i say i stated it i say in some cases not absolutely some cases, okay. so yeah, okay, you are correct you are right we are together okay with you. thank you thank you thank you so much uh, the reason why i wanted to clarify is it's very unfortunate that um, there are many uh, you know many believers and ministries these days where it is taught that everyone needs a prophet okay and uh, that's creating a lot of havoc in the in the kingdom of god in the body of christ where um, you know well meaning believers who want to grow in the lord they're running behind prophets they're running behind you know conference after conference prophetic word after prophetic word prophet after prophet impartation after impartation but god doesn't want us to live like that so the prophetic doesn't mean that our dependence uh, is is created in that manner that would be absolutely wrong so god can directly minister to us speak to us if required he will confirm it through a prophetic word or a prophet or you know something else so um, that we have to be very clear about otherwise we'll create an unnecessary dependence on people and run after them that is not correct okay so <clears throat> useful discussion there very helpful for us to um, you know uh, make good choices so uh, let's move ahead then with uh, chapter 4 in our notes where we will talk about the prophetic word god's um, you know prophecy as a gift can be released in several ways uh, there are <clears throat> there are um, you know certain categories that that we will look at so the the prophetic the prophetic can come forth as a message which we can understand as a prophetic word so you know, if there's if there's a message which is spoken we will call that as a prophetic word now prophecy like i could have a, a thought um and wonder why is god showing me that but that could also be so that i can pray so there is the prophetic at work or prophecy at work but that needs to uh, be channeled into intercession so you understand you know the prophetic is flowing but there are different ways of releasing it uh and uh, you know different ways of uh, uh, seeing the power of god uh, come forth so one is releasing that as a message which we call as a prophetic word the second is when we receive revelation from god uh, we we pray about it and that is prophetic intercession and prophetic intercession is we pray on the basis of what is revealed next is prophetic power prophetic power is when there is a demonstration of power at the release of the prophetic word so that's the third one prophetic power the fourth is prophetic song so prophetic song is when um there is the release of praise uh, worship uh, or even music so sometimes without the words when people are playing their instruments and certain sounds are released they could be prophetic that is remember the case of uh, uh, elisha when he called for a musician and he began to play uh, and so you see there's there's something about music even without words uh, it can be prophetic it can carry the prophetic flow in it so prophetic song which includes worship praise but also just music then uh, prophetic action prophetic action is uh, 
it's a message from god but then it is released in the form of an action if you recall we talked about um, agabus in the book of acts when he had a word that paul is going to be imprisoned what did he do he took paul's belt and he bound himself and he said uh, the man whose belt this is he will be bound so he is doing an action there instead of releasing the word such as thus says the lord paul will be bound paul will be so the release comes in the form of an action so these are all some of the primary categories in which uh, the prophetic or prophecy can be released now again though we are classifying for the sake of deeper understanding there is no need to compartmentalize so by that we simply mean that when one is ministering okay, maybe the pastor is also a worship uh, a leader and uh, he he says something to the congregation okay, normal general instruction and then he begins to pray then comes the prophetic word so he's saying thus says the lord this and that and so he releases the prophetic word uh, but maybe he's he's playing on his keys and for a moment there is the prophetic music going on right there and then some words are released to him where the church congregation begins to sing uh, in sing the prophetic song so now they are flowing in prophetic song okay so what's happening the flow of the prophetic can be any which way and there's really no need to stop and try and discern hey what was this was this prophetic song or prophetic word or prophetic it's just you know for our sake so um it can uh, god's uh, work can go on any way okay so that that is the the point that i want to make there now that we have an idea of these expressions let's talk a little bit about the prophetic word so that would be a message that comes from god and we've been saying that the prophetic word its intention is to um build up god's people and as per first corinthians 14:3 it uh, edifies it exhorts and it comforts so edification what is edification edification means building up exhortation means uh, comfort so the greek words are given here in in our notes uh, if you know you are interested you could um, go over that uh, and comfort comfort is speaking uh, speaking in a close way or in in a um, in a sort of a tender way to someone that is comfort so what god is really doing for his people is he is building them up he is encouraging them and <coughs> he is speaking tenderly to the people uh, now talking about encouragement uh, what we could say is um it can be prospective or uh, which is talking about the future but then when we look at something like um, uh, comfort okay so exhortation generally it it has to do with uh, what lies ahead that don't worry god is with you or god is doing this in your life or um, god will you know cause this change to come through but the comfort aspect comfort aspect that we said oh speaking tenderly to someone speaking in a close way to someone that is more to do with the retrospective way um, where something that people have experienced let's say a trial or uh, you know some difficulty the prophetic word what will it do it will heal their hearts as you speak it over them so the comfort falls under more mostly in the uh, retrospective part of things and as this is done as we uh, release the gift of prophecy over people what can we expect well, we can expect that um, people will begin to grow spiritually um, that uh, you know they it 
they they will experience god very close to them because you know god is speaking to them in various ways and addressing parts of their life so we have understood now the primary motivation of the prophetic word what it does what it means uh, you know uh, to to uh, be releasing edification exhortation and comfort now the prophetic word can also reveal one's true character and potential uh, the good example of this would be uh, nathaniel Okay, so Nathaniel, we know that Jesus saw him under the fig tree, and without even knowing this person, he made a statement that, "Behold, here is an Israelite uh, in whom there is no deceit." So he knew the nature or the character of an individual without having, you know, knowledge uh, as an in a logical way. This is supernatural without having a relationship with person. through the gift of the holy spirit jesus is saying uh, you are a man or this is a man without any deceit so is it possible for the prophetic word to come forth in such a way that it shows somebody's character yes so uh, we we could see you know words released in that manner uh, i have heard prophetic words where um, i remember once a, a prophet had come to our church this is many years ago and one of my friends i know her to be a very very compassionate person okay she is like extremely compassionate uh, and the the prophet started calling different people out in the congregation and saying stuff about them so he suddenly picked my friend and then uh, he doesn't know her he's from another country and he you know he's on we were only seeing him uh, in that conference in person and he calls her out and he and he starts talking about her and saying okay god has given you gifts uh, um, god has given you you are a very compassionate person and you know he started talking about that nature of hers that character of hers and for me it was almost shocking i'm like actually yes you know but how do you know how did you know that so god can reveal the character of people and it's in a way it's very helpful in leadership uh, i'm not saying that you know you can judge or prejudge people without giving them an opportunity let's not do that that's not a right thing to do but sometimes sometimes rarely um we may meet somebody and though we don't have a relationship with them we are in that place of uh, you know understanding oh this person they they are a faithful person or this person they are a, a generous person you know so uh, it's possible to actually uh, discern the character and the prophetic word uh, we have seen that it can do that now the prophetic word can also reveal one's capacity okay or potential now they may not have done much for the kingdom of god but just having met that person um the prophetic word can come to say that hey this is your destiny now the classic example is when jesus was talking to simon he was talking to simon and he says you are simon the son of jonah you shall be called cephas so what is he doing he is um he is speaking over him to tell him that the potential that he carries cephas is a stone so that potential uh, is is to be a rock for the church the early church and we know that when um Uh, peter was with jesus and uh, you know before jesus was crucified his personality was not that firm and clear but then we know that at some point after jesus was uh, you know resurrected and they started gathering in groups he was the first one to get up and speak he was the first one to to you know uh, uh, make that sermon uh in acts 2 and uh, 3000 people got saved on that day now just imagine you know this man is not at all stable right now and based on that jesus is not uh jesus is able to see further 
into his life and into his destiny and he doesn't negate him from the ministry or uh, you know uh, from from any assignment based on his current situation but instead he speaks over peter and he says you are peter you are uh, you shall be called cephas or rock and then what has happened because of that prophetic word which is released over him we see that he turned out to be quite solid firm unshakable you know like a rock and we uh, know that steadfastness and commitment became a part of his personality uh, and and much later it emerged during his leadership so gifts and abilities of a person character of a person these are things that we can um, discern through the prophetic and it's very helpful because what we can do is it's it's like you know you encourage you activate people around you especially when we are leaders we can pray and say god just show us show us how how people are gifted and we should use it to uh use it in a constructive way where you know when you begin to identify oh this brother he's he's god is calling him to teach that brother god is calling him in worship then we begin to activate those things maybe those individuals don't even know it right now they don't know their character they don't know their potential but we can slowly say hey see as as i'm talking to you this is what god is saying and paul did that a lot to timothy you know he said the uh, he encouraged him he knew and and one of the things about timothy was it seems like he was very fearful he was intimidated by by the learned people around him by the older people around him so you know paul used this all all this information <clears throat> and the spiritual uh, discernment to tell him hey you have not received the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind so timothy you know, don't don't let people tell you that uh, you are young you can set an example even though you are young in word in deed so uh, we can use this you know we can use the prophetic word um, to continue to know people's character and potential so that we can help them not to uh, cut them off because of our ability to discern but it's more to encourage them it's more to counsel them uh, and to help them to get on the right track okay so what we will do is let's take a break at this point it's 9:50 already we will come back if you have any questions we can take that up um and then proceed from there so uh, have a good break we shall meet in 10 minutes thank you Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, brother.